Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to be talking about mental health and uh, race today, um, which is extremely prevalent <clears throat> in the news. Um, the exact title, uh, hopefully you can see this, uh, Health Disparities, Health uh, it, it, Help Equality uh, and Social Justice and Integrated Behavioral Health Care. Um, you know, it's a, um, it's a sensitive subject right now. But we have a crisis in the in the country right now, and we need we need mental health services uh, to be uh, equal uh, across the board, socioeconomic status and and race, uh, color and and religion. And it's certainly not. And I think that starts with a systemic approach in in education. Um, Tonight, we're going to learn um, how to increase our knowledge of health disparities and health um, equity in the context in which they exist, develop an understanding of the role of addressing health disparities in integrated behavioral, behavioral care, explore ways to address health disparities and promote health uh, equity in integrated behavioral care models. Um, I'm having trouble with that word equity. Um, I'm not sure it should be there, but, but you know, that's a fancy way of saying that, you know, we, we have a racist society. Um, there's a lot of prejudices. Um, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, that are not getting um, their needs met. And, um, you know, tonight I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about some of the, some of the things that have been in the news and some of the people that, you know, that have been in the news, whether it's related to Black Lives Matter whether it's related to um, uh, police officers, um, you know, get, you know, being under fire, um, the, the the kid in Chicago, thirteen year old kid being shot, um, you know, we're going to talk about that and how that relates to uh, mental health services. Um, so, so here, who who deals with health disparity issues in the U.S.? Well, here here is a list of of, of those people. Uh, the NIH, the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities, uh, the Office of Minority Health, Office of Minority Health and Health Disparities, the CDC, uh, Office of Behavioral Health uh, Equity, SAMHSA within SAMHSA, which is which is a major major organization in um, in the country, and then and then HRSA, uh, Office of Health uh, Equity. So th that's who deals with it. Um, how health disparity and health equity are defined affects how policy is dealt with. Uh, for policy purposes, we need to distinguish among the disparities of health and health care and health equity and inequalities. Differences in the incidences, mortality and burden of disease and other adverse health conditions that exist among special population groups in the United States differences in health that are not only unnecessary and avoidable, but in addition are considered unfair and unjust. So, so you know, what, what we're saying here is the disparities in, in health and health care. And, you know, I'm just going to say it bluntly that minorities don't get the care that, you know, that they need. Um, the system is not set up for them. Um, oftentimes they're, um, they're on long lines. Uh, they cannot afford um, the, the the care. They have to decide what they're paying for. They don't have health insurance. Um, they're not even making that much money. Um, disparities in health care, um, defining health uh, equity. Uh, why is it important to define these terms, right? Why did I just spend, you know, two or three minutes defining these terms? Um, because we need to be educated, we need to know what the difference is, uh, you know, between these but between these items. Um, I think that's where it starts uh, with with education. Uh, you know, I I I have to I have to be honest uh, with with everybody tonight. I'm gonna and I'll probably go back to this um, a little bit, but the um, that that killing of a 13 year old kid in Chicago, I I didn't think about the police officer making a split decision and shooting, uh, shooting this young, this boy um, as necessarily the problem. 
my first thought was he's 13. It's three o'clock in the morning. He's got a gun on him. Why is he running down an alleyway? What, what, what is going on in the family system? Uh, what is, what is going on with this kid individually that he feels the need to be part of a gang or part of people that are out on the street. I think it was a school night um, at, at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, n- nothing good happens after midnight anyway. And, and th- you know, this is, this is an example of it. What is going on where this, this kid felt the need to be part of something else that was absolutely destructive? Now, that being said, do I think that the, the, the police officers need to be trained? 100%. Um, but I think that the, the, the fight against them is a deflection. Uh, I, I, if I was a police officer in this climate, I would think twice about going into the career of, of law enforcement. The defunding of police um, absolutely impacts uh, race, color, creed, religion. Uh, it impacts our systems, our mental health systems, our behavioral health systems. Um, if the police are going to not be there in force um, or full complement, we are going to have more problems. Uh, things like uh, depression and anxiety within a system or within a location that brings out antisocial behavior and anxiety behavior and narcissistic behavior. We are going to see that. We're going to go. We're going to see an increase in rapes. We're going to see an increase in robberies. We're going to see an increase in racism between white and black and 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 all the others. So <clears throat> that's the reason that I define these terms. Um, question: Should mental and substance use disorder treatments be integrated into general health policy? Of course, it should be. There, there's no there's no question about it. Mental health and substance abuse education need to be taught in the school system from the get-go, from, from elementary school on. And it should be across the country, should be a federal mandate um, that every state has to comply with it. Um, the, another question is, or should they be treated as exceptions? Should it be a carve-out? Why? Why, why should there be a carve-out of mental health and substance abuse disorder policy? Why should it be special? It is absolutely prevalent in our life and our lifestyle right now. Substance abuse use is way up since COVID. I, I, I don't have the stats. I just, know, I just know it is. There's articles upon articles about fentanyl use, how that's on the rise, um, how, how people developed um, a drug habit while being isolated. Uh, mental illness is, is, is going through the roof because of isolation and anxiety and depression. And you know what? We need this attention. We need to be able to come together and, and, to, figure it, and, and to figure this out. Um, people that are in low socioeconomic status need help just like everybody else, and they're not getting it. The face of health disparities. Uh, uh, Let's talk about this uh, Brianna um, that I have here on the, um, you know, on the PowerPoint. Brianna is a nine-year-old African-American female who was admitted to the pediatrics unit for respiratory failure related to an undiagnosed asthma. Brianna receives almost all of her medical care from an emergency room and urgent care visits. She lives at home with her mother and two siblings. Brianna's mom works as a clerk at a construction company and earns $29,000 a year. She cannot afford to pay for the additional health insurance fees for her three children. Remember I said that? Most of, the, most, most of these folks don't, don't have health insurance and, and has become increasingly depressed due to numerous stressors. Maria, 81, recently had a stroke. Uh, and also has diabetes and high blood pressure. She relies on a wheelchair and needs help with her activities. Maria came to the U.S. when she was in her 20s from the Mexican state of Oaxaca and worked in agriculture until she retired at 65. She relies on her family for her care. Her family doesn't know how they will continue to pay for her and manage Maria's care. Typical information, we've got Brianna, a child, and Maria, 81, 
on. They're not getting the 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 needs their needs met. Their family isn't. They're gonna they're gonna die. Um, their mortality rate is way low. Uh, the comorbidity between depression and anxiety and drug addiction is is extremely high. This is a high risk situation. Health disparities are connected to a social context that includes individual socioeconomic and political factors which determine health outcomes. Factories may include, I'm sorry, factors, not factories. Factors may include housing, neighborhood, access to work, and educational opportunities, individual lifestyle, age, gender, socioeconomic status, and access to health care. Evidence shows that health disparities among particular racial and ethnic groups have multiple causes that need to be addressed on multiple levels. Um, Brianna and Maria's context and how they have led to health disparities is a great example. Those are two great examples. Um, I have a graph for you here um, about, about the uh, inequality that exists between the social and political uh, environment that, that goes on. Uh, we, we, we've got uh, patterns of social and economic inequality We've got physical and cultural environment, community differences and availability of healthcare, which is a huge one. Um, I, you know what, I, I just wanna spend a minute on this for a second. Uh, this one exists in all neighborhoods. Um, unless you are uh, wealthy enough to have your, a private doctor, uh, the services, uh, for medical services and, and health care and behavioral health services is like the best is like the best kept secret in town. You you don't know they exist. Uh, you can't access them. And if you do, it's about 100 layers of red tape to get to somebody to get your needs met. That just doesn't exist in. Uh, low socioeconomic neighborhoods that that exists across the board. Um, people that people that are middle class, even upper middle class, and then you know low, you know, and then the other way, lower than that, ha have experienced that. It is extremely frustrating. Uh, not to mention, I even mentioned about uh, pharmacy and 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 medication. Um, there's practitioner uh, factors. Uh, one one of the things that um, that I that I want to I want to make mention of is this is this is just timing, but it's relevant to today. Is that a lot of psychiatrists um, and a lot of psychologists or professionals uh, we're, we're seeing a a huge uh, uptick in retirement. Uh, and what does that mean? That means that some people that have been in practice for many many years are no longer in practice. That means that the people that they impact, and this is across the country, um, no longer have them as a safety net. And so these people are left sort of scrambling. Their, their insurance may have changed. Um, they have to change doctors. They have to start over. That is occurring right now. Um, you, you can call it like a, like a perfect storm, if you will, but it is absolutely occurring. You know, uh, you layer that on with COVID and, and all these other factors and stressors and losing your job. And, and uh, you, you, you've, got a, you've got a problem here in the country. We have got to start with education, education in the school system. Um, and then I have some other stuff here, community norms and lifestyles, federal, state, private uh, financing and organizations. People need to be able to access money. Um, that's what the government should be doing for the states that can't afford it. They need to be able, when it comes to this topic, they need to be able to get the help uh, that, that they need. Um, re re really quick, actually not so quick. So I read this article re recently where a, a nonprofit received $25 million um, grant on a research to, to come up with a vaccine uh, for, for fentanyl. Um, I'm not really sure what that means. Um, I read the article and I, and I left thinking, I'm not, sh I'm not sure what a vaccine for fentanyl means. Does it mean that it, it doesn't work on somebody? Does it mean that it reduces the, the cravings? Does it, re does it not get you the high? 
Um, does it only have a certain amount of impact? There, there are a lot of questions that I have, but that's besides the point. And I need to make a footnote here and say that I love the idea of having research done on vaccines, especially when it has to do with mental health and, and substance abuse. I think that's fantastic. Um, however, however, who cares about a vaccine for fentanyl when fentanyl is end stage addiction, fentanyl is used in hospice, it's used in, in you know, in cancer patients, it's used in, in end stage uh, pain um, that's, that people are going through so that they're comfortable. Uh, it, it, it is not, uh, you, you know, it, it is a recreational use for drug addicts uh, combined with alcohol, opiates, benzodiazepines, uh, uppers, downers, you know, all, all, all of that, all of that stuff. Uh, it, it's, it, it's used in addition to, but I'm still not clear as to why a vaccine would help um, anyone in any race, color, or creed. Uh, how about a vaccine that prevents mental illness, um, that reduces symptoms of depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia? That is what I'm interested in. Um, how about a, a vaccine that helps people that are prone to addiction curb their cravings and and man helps manage their tolerance and their withdrawal symptoms uh of the drugs that they are taking uh if if that were the case then we've got some vaccines that that um that actually uh mean something and and we really we, we really could utilize that so examples of health disparities and mental health uh, children from racial ethnic minority groups are a third to a half less likely to receive necessary mental health treatment than white children, despite similar prevalent rates. Only one in 11 Latinos with a mental health disorder uh, contacts a mental health provider and one in five contacts a general health care provider. They're just not going to. And there's cultural elements to this too. I mean, if you look at, if you look at um, the non-white uh, you know, the non-white culture, in their culture, they're, it, they're, they're not reaching out to a healthcare pro, uh, pre, uh, provider uh, for a lot of reasons, one of which they're probably white. And they don't want to go to somebody who doesn't understand them. Uh, LGBT adults have higher rates of smoking, alcohol, and drug use and suicide and depression. So that needs to be addressed. Uh, more examples of health disparity and mental health, Hispanic Americans, except those from Puerto Rico, Asian Americans and Black Americans have a lower incidence of mental disorders than white Americans. The Latino or Hispanic paradox, Hispanic populations have lower rates of illness, but the more time someone from Mexico, Africa, or the Caribbean spend in the US, the higher the rate of disorders, uh, the higher the rate of disorders. American Indians are at a high risk for PTSD and alcohol dependency, but a low risk for depression. These are just stats from, from SAMHSA. Uh, do what you will with them. They're, they're pretty accurate, though. SAMHSA is very solid. How do we measure health uh, disparity, life expectancy, infant mortality, rate of chronic disease, health care, what's recommended? barriers to care, access to care, geographic uh, and provider level differences. Uh, for example, um, somebody who is treating middle to upper class probably went to a better school, probably has better training than somebody who's working in the inner city or rural area. Availability of culturally sensitive trained bilingual mental health professionals uh, getting a bilingual male, for example, uh, almost unheard of across the board. Causes of disparities in mental health and substance use disorders, lack of insurance, geographic and provider level differences, poor access, low quality of care, health provider assumptions and discriminations. Um, let's face it, we, we are a racist um, country. Uh, we are prejudiced without even knowing it. 
language bar barriers, and mental health workforce disparities. Approaches to reduce or eliminate these disparities, address social disparities, address it, talk about it, right? Poor, poor housing, low education, poverty, lack of job opportunities, one. Improve access to care, two. Provide incentives to healthcare professionals for improving communication, providing appropriate screening and treatment, three. Get some qualified people in these areas. Increase racial and ethnic diversity in mental health care workforce to reflect community populations. An example of integrated model of care addressing health disparities. So an organization that addresses health disparities is culturally and linguistically competent, responsive to the community, resides in a reasonable location, has flexible hours, and committed to addressing social detriments of health disparity, socioeconomic status, et cetera, et cetera. Equity in mental and substance use disorders. Um, here is the Mental Health Parity Act. Um, there, there's a couple of acts here that, that, you know, that I've listed. Um, you, can, you can reference them and, and certainly go through them. There are numerous provisions uh, for, the, uh, for the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act that addresses reducing health disparities. Um, they're under six domains, whatever that's worth. Data collection, di workforce diversity, cultural competency, funding, uh, prevention program, addressing disparity in health insurance reform. So uh, if we, if we go, go through this even more, SAMHSA says, for consumers of mental health services or those in recovery from addiction disorders, the law's provisions and the general movement toward integration are important steps that can lead to improved overall health. Pretty, pretty, pretty accurate. Um, so <clears throat> achieving health equality, uh, equity for all, an organization model for change. So this is some of the things that, you know, that, that we should be looking at. How does an agency address health disparity? We, we talked about it. Uh, key step is an organizational self-assessment uh, to determine which issues need to be addressed, the organization's ability to address these issues, and its readiness to implement the changes. So it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing uh, um, to actually uh, to actually implement it. Um, here is a list uh, of, of additional models for organizational self-assessment. Uh, pr pretty interesting tools uh, where you can really hone in on uh, what your organization is all about. <clears throat> Health equity beyond race and ethnicity. Um, I uh, hang on one second lost my place there. <clears throat> um, again, a lot of socioeconomic status, um, access to health care, uh, cultural differences. These are these are the references um, you know that you know that that we have um, for uh, for this PowerPoint. So that's the end of the PowerPoint. Um, I hope that uh, that you found it interesting. Uh, please ask uh, any any questions, um, and I will I will follow up with you. Have a good evening.